And there we go. That's all it takes. This guy could not resist. One of that little split shot grub. Look at this. There we go. Here we go. A little split shot grub. That's all we need to do here. Bring this guy in. Okay, here we go. Look at that. Look at that. Could not resist a little split shot grub. I'm telling you what, that's what we're talking about today. How to catch fish on a split shot grub. Hey folks, Glenn May here with BassResource.com and today I want to talk to you about fishing a grub split shot style or mojo rig style. This is, what we're talking about is a cylindrical weight about 18 inches above the hook. If you don't know how to rig this, I've got a, a video that talks about rigging grubs it's linked underneath this video. You can go check that out later if you want to learn how to rig this. But right now we're going to talk about what equipment and gear we're going to use, and then we're going to, I'm going to show you how to fish it. So starting right off here, we've got a three inch grub. I'm using a, a one-aught extra wide gap thin wire hook. Nice and thin, that's, a, that's, that's important in this setup. It's a finesse setup, so we don't need a real heavy hook that's going to weight this down, because we want this to be actually above uh, above the, the bottom of the lake a little bit. So a light wire hook is what you need. I know a lot of people like to use fluorocarbon. It's, you know, that's fine. Knock yourself out. I'm not saying anything wrong with that. If that's what you use, then go ahead and do it. I don't do that because I want this to come up off the bottom, much like a Carolina rig. This is just a baby Carolina rig. Think of it that way. That bait's gonna come up off the bottom and then come back down. If that fluorocarbon line's got some weight to it. It's not gonna come up off the bottom as much as you would, say, this hybrid approach. Braid sounds like a good choice in that when you're talking about that because braid is actually buoyant and would actually help bring the bait up a little bit higher, but we're fishing in real clear water. Braid looks like rope in that kind of those conditions, so we're not going to use that today. Again, I got it about 18 inches above. Uh, that's where I have the weight. The reason being is I want the fish to focus on the bait and not the weights. And I also want the bait to be to freely move about as much as possible be as natural looking as it can be. If I bring that bait up much closer, the weight up maybe to 10 or 12 inches, you know, this starts to inhibit the action of the bait and that's, that's what kind of kill the action. So about 18 inches up and we're good to go. Again, six pound test line, we're using that to match this light wire hook. So to finish that off, we want to use a rod that's a medium light action rod. It's got a lot of give to it, a lot of play to it, and that way when you set the hook, you're not going to straighten it out, nor are you going to break the line. This rod will have that give that it needs to fight the fish back with that light setup. Just a spinning outfit, that's what we're using today. So that's the gear, that's the equipment. Now let's go fishing. All right, what I have here is I'm fishing a, an area that's got a rocky bottom with some weeds in it. And that's a great place to fish the split shot rig because the weight is going to slide through those rocks a lot easier. They're not going to get hung up as much as other weights would and it's gonna go through the weeds as well. And the, and the bait, of course, is Texas rig, so it's not gonna get hung up as much either. So it's a great place to fish this rig. All you're gonna do is you're gonna cast it out there, and when you cast it, just bring it back and let the, let the weight kind of settle down a little bit, and then it's a lob cast. It's not a real hard cast. You're not trying to win any distance competitions here. Matter of fact, if you throw it really hard, that weight in the bait, they're gonna twist like this in, the, in midair, and they're gonna get all tangled up before they even hit the water, and it's gonna ruin your presentation. So don't try to throw it out there really far. It's just a lob cast. If you've thrown Carolina rigs, you know what I'm talking about. And once it hits the water, you're gonna watch the weight. Watch, the, watch where the line hit the water, and let it fall on slack line, and you know, cock the bail over. But other than that, just watch it fall straight down on slack line. What you're going to do is you're going to watch for the line to jump, pop, twitch, anything odd like that. Usually that's when a fish hits it. They'll, they'll hit it when it falls. That's, you're going to see it that way. If you do, just reel up the slack and then set the hook. And you don't have to set it really hard. You know, you're using a light line. You're using a light hook. This is medium light action rod. So you don't <clears throat> you know, need to set it really hard. Just, it's a light hook set. It's about like that. Just a moderate hook set if that at all. Some people just reel down on it and they just reel it in faster or they, they just bring the rod sideways like that, which is called a sweep set. It's not much of a hook set at all. Well, however you do it, just make sure you don't hit them really hard. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the first one uh, retrieved to use. This is the one that made the, 
the split shot so popular back in the 80s when they first came out. So here I've, I've cocked the bale, I'm watching the line fall right where it goes in the water, making sure that it doesn't tw twitch or jump, pop. Okay, so now it's on the bottom. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift the weight up and all I wanna do is reel the weight just off the bottom, keeping it just off the bottom, just like that. Let the, let the grub, let the tail just wiggle back and forth and do its work. The, the grub is gonna look like a little bait fish swimming in the water. Now, I'm gonna keep it above the weeds too. If you're fishing over weeds or a big flat, it's a great way to fish it just right above the weeds. You're not gonna get tangled in there like you would a crankbait. And in fact, anywhere you fish a crankbait, this is a great rig to throw. It, you know, it's funny with finesse techniques, a lot of people think that it's really slow fishing, but here, I'm just cranking back. So you can actually cover water just as fast as you would with a crankbait. And this is a great search technique, great way to find fish. You can do it this way, or say for instance, you fished an area with a crankbait and, the, and the, the bite dies off. Go back through that area with this rig. You can pick up, you can just pick right up right where you left off and keep catching fish. Okay, so that is like the primary, that's, that's what everybody used to fish it this way when it first came out and it's still productive today. Another way to do this, Again, I've thrown it out there, I'm watching the line, it hits the bottom. Now all you're gonna do is lift the weight up and let it drop. Lift it and let it drop. And when you do that, lift it up slowly. You don't pop it up, lift it up slowly, and then follow the weight back down with the rod tip. You want the rod to fall about the same rate as the weight and reel up slack as you do that. So you don't wanna move the weight with your reel, just let the weight drop naturally. Now the reason you want to do that is a lot of times the baits happen on uh, the bites happen on the fall. If you're maintaining contact like that, and this is what people call, you know, letting something fall on a semi-slack line, by the way. If you maintain contact with it, you're more apt to detect the bite. So it's worth learning how to do. So let me show you how to do that. So I'm just gonna lift the bait up off the bottom and then let it fall back down. And I'm just matching the weight, the speed of the drop with the rod tip. And that's on the bottom. And lift it right back up and let it fall right back down. Nice, slow, methodical way. And you see, I'm bringing it all the way down to about the seven o'clock position. And when I bring it back up, I'm, I'm bringing it almost, almost the straight up. Now it seems like I'm really lifting the bait really high off the bottom, but actually I'm not. What I'm doing is the bait's here, and uh, excuse me, the, the weight is here and the bait is here. When you lift it up, then the the bait falls, follows it, and then the weight drops, and the bait follows it. So the weight is going a lot higher up than the bait is. So it feels like you're lifting it way off the bottom, when in fact you're really not. You just have to get past that mental image. <clears throat> All right, so the next one I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna cast it out there. Again, same way I've told you, a nice, nice lob cast. Let it fall, I'm watching the line, letting it fall all the way to the bottom. See, I've got the line, the, the bale flipped, rod ready to, to set the hook. Okay, it hit the bottom. And the way you can tell it hit the bottom is, is the line just goes slack on you. That's it, it just, it stops peeling off, it stops moving, so now you know it's on the bottom. And now all we're gonna do is just drag it on the bottom. I'm just gonna move the bait on the bottom. I reel up the slack when I bring the rod tip up, but I'm not moving it with the reel. I'm just moving it with the rod. Okay, you're gonna feel every rock, twig, branch, weed. You're gonna feel the bottom. You're gonna get a good idea of what's on the bottom by doing it this way. Plus, you're gonna, you're gonna feel the bite as well. And now, how fast you do it and how long you wait between pauses, that you're gonna have to play with. Sometimes the fish want it moving fast, sometimes they want it moving slow, and other times you'll get their attention when you move it, but the only time they're gonna pick it up is when it's sitting still. And so you have to wait longer between the pauses. There's no right or wrong way to do it. You just have to play with it and figure out how the fish want it that day. And just keep in mind, just because they bit it really well last week that way doesn't mean they're gonna bite it the next week. You gotta start all over again and learn, figure out what it is they want that day. Now, one, um, a derivative of doing it this way is you just take the bait and throw it out towards the back of the boat let it fall, and then what I do is I, I just, I flip the bale, and then I just move the bait with the, with the boat. 
I get the trolling motor here at about on 20, 20 to 30, somewhere in there. I keep my rod tip down so I can feel the strike and I'm ready to, to set, the, set the hook. And I just drag it. That's all you do. And bring it up over the structure that's down deep. And this is a, actually how I fish a lot of times in the winter time, almost exclusively. My fish are down deeper, they're holding off offshore structure. This is a perfect way to fish it in the winter time. But even in the summertime when they're fishing off, when, when you're off in deep water structure, great way to cover that, that structure. Which reminds me, during the summer and the winter time, that's when the bulk of the fish are out in the main lake and they're a little bit deeper. So during those times of the year, I want to fish, I'm fishing main lake points, I'm fishing rock humps, uh, rock piles, drop-offs, ledges, I'm fishing creek channels, places where the creek channel, the, the bend swings in towards the, the shoreline. Those are the places that I'm going to target. That's where the fish are really going to key on during those times of the year. Just in the wintertime, I'll fish a little bit slower than I would in the, in the summertime, but other than that, I'm fishing the same places. In the spring and in the fall, the fish are a little bit more shallow. So during those times of the years, I want to target the backs of bays, or you know, protected bays, protected coves, backs of creek channels, uh, flats, grassy flats are one of my favorites. Those are the places that I'm going to target. And I'm going to do it just the way I just showed you. If you target those same areas, fishing the same techniques I just told you, you're going to catch a lot of fish. For more tips and tricks like this, visit BassResource.com. Hey, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And if you want to watch more videos like this, click one of the images on your screen right now. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.